Hi everyone. This is our movie on the writing conventions for 8th grade science. We are a writing intensive classroom. We do a lot of labs and those labs require the students to uh, write responses to different things that they're seeing in those labs. And all of our written work has one goal. And we, our goal is for the students to start producing written work that they can use as a resource. Our motto in class, kids get tired of hearing me say this, is to work to be correct and clear as opposed just to just working to be done. We really ex uh, stress expository writing and really only two key conventions of expository writing and we'll stress those all year long and if they can master these, they will have very well written work. Now, the two things that we, we stress, the first one is answers written with context. In other words, by reading the student response to a question, I should be able to and they should be able to infer what the question that was asked what it was. The second one is to avoid excessive use of personal pronouns. Now an example of what we're looking for. If we pose the question, how is uniform motion different from accelerated motion? A typical student response, and this is an actual student response, is it is traveling in the same direction and at a constant speed. First thing I would point out about this answer is it's absolutely correct. The student did the work and understood the concept the problem is, is if they come back to this in two weeks, with what they've written, they're going to have a very hard time remembering what they did and making sense of that. What we want to do is, is move them from writing answers like this to writing the same answer like this. Uniform motion is different from accelerated motion because with uniform motion, the object must travel in the same direction and at a constant speed. Now, a couple things that, that distinguish this from the first one is first of all in red right there is the reflects the question that was asked. They're using the question as kind of the stem for their answer, but it's very clear what the question was. The second thing that this does is you'll notice in the box there, the previous answer started with the personal pronoun its. Here we, we expressly say what its is, and that is uniform motion. And again, those two conventions make this response go from something that won't be clear in two weeks to something that will be completely clear in two weeks. And these are the two conventions that we stress all year long. And it's very difficult to get some of the kids going on this because especially the personal pronouns, a lot of times they're breaking habits they've gotten into and the getting question and answer is more time consuming. And so that's also difficult. Now with numbers, we have to do the same thing Here's a response with numbers that we sometimes see, and again, start with a personal pronoun, but we call these naked numbers because I have no idea what the quantities mean, so we stress whenever possible getting numbers put in tables. That keeps that from, that makes that perfectly clear. And another one is, it is 27, again, personal pronoun, naked number. We put that in a complete sentence. Now that number has context and makes sense. Now, Quick look red flags, and I'm used to this being having taught for many, many years, but when I'm going around the room, I don't have time to sit and read every student's response word for word, and I've found that I don't really need to. I have some things that I can just decipher at a glance. The first one's pretty obvious, and that's just anytime I see somebody with like a three-word answer, they're certainly not getting even the question fully answered, uh, let alone having the question reflected in the answer and the like. But the other one that's more common than that are sentences that begin with because, it, its, or they. And the reason that those are such a red flag is when students are starting sentences like that, they're rarely writing in an expository form, and instead they're writing in a conversational form, and they are only writing their half of the conversation. And that means when they look at them in two weeks, they really have no idea what their very own work means. And then finally, yes or no at the beginning of responses is a kind of red flag. It's a little bit tricky. More often than not, that also is in a conversational tone when those start a sentence. But I do have some students use those and still have some pretty good answers. So those are those I have to read a little bit more carefully. But anything that begins with because, it, its, or they is definitely not meeting those expository writing con uh, conventions that we stress in class. And the number one thing I tell the students is... If I can look at their notebook and look at, say, a lab that we did two weeks prior to when we're looking at it and point to one of the, the answers and say, what does this say? 
And what does it mean? If they can tell me from their own notebook, then they have good writing conventions and they're in good shape. But anyway, those really are the two writing conventions that are tough and they're what we stress all year long. Thanks for watching.